We've been doing some products, we've been doing some chain rule. Let's have a go at this. This is a question, okay? So the first thing that I do, now watch out here because we know that, you know, 5 times 3 is the same as 3 times 5. Multiplication is commutative. You can change the order, no problems, okay? Division, though, division is not commutative. Uh, What's the opposite of commutative? Non-commutative. <laughs> <laughs> um, I was going to say mutative, but that doesn't make sense. Um, 20 divided by 4 is very much not the same as 40 divided by 4 divided by 20. Okay? So whereas here, it didn't matter what was what, here it does matter. It's in alphabetical order, so that's easy. You've got U on the top and V on the bottom, because that's how I started things off. Right, U on V. So when you're labeling things so you don't confuse them, it's in alphabetical order, it's so that's easy. Oh, mm. that yeah, that's true. Go watch our first derivatives. Okay, now let's have a go. <laughs> I'm gonna start just by quoting this guy, not because it's, as we said, not because it's meritorious, but just so that I know I can put the right pieces in. So V U dash minus U V dash all over V squared. Okay. V just by itself, that's x squared plus 1. What's u dash in this case? It's just 1. I'm going to stick that guy in. I know it has no effect, but that way I'm like, okay, I've done the first one, now I've done the second one, so I'm checking off in my head. Take away u, which is just x. Okay. What's v dash in this case? 2x, very good all over, and then this guy at the bottom gets squared. Now traditionally, we don't really muck around with this guy, okay? You can see one of the reasons why, by the way. You know when we were solving like, okay, this is a, a rational function, right? This is a rational function. When you were graphing something like this, in fact, we graphed one just like this earlier, um, the denominator is important, but the numerator is kind of more important. The numerator gives you like roots and stuff like that. So this guy in the denominator, just leaving him like that is generally no problem. Um, especially when you get some really ridiculous stuff down the bottom. Generally, it's quite fine to leave it. Let's expand the top and then we can tidy this thing up. x squared plus 1 minus 2x squared. Yep. All over. Just going to leave this guy as he is. I gained nothing out of simplifying him or expanding him, I should say. And so now I'm done. Ta-da. I suppose I could factorize the top if I wanted to. Uh, in the future, when you're trying to work out where this numerator is equal to zero, it's clearly advantageous to factorize that numerator, make it one minus x, one plus x. But here I just have the derivative unfinished. Yeah, exactly. All right, I think, I think you're there. All right, let's give it a shot. V, right, label them right, okay. When I differentiate this, I'm just gonna put all my pieces together and then I'm going to evaluate, okay? So, what have I got on the top? I've got, help me out here, what's V? X, what's U dash? 2X. 2X. Take away, what's U? X squared, X squared plus one. V dash is just one, okay? All over X squared. X squared. There's, my, there's my V, my denominator, okay? Tidy me up on the top here, okay? What have I got to start with? 2x squared, take minus x squared, minus 1, yep, all over x squared. Okay, watch for those brackets, okay. I can tidy up a little further, x squared, take 1 on the numerator. And I'm kind of finished, I'm kind of finished. Though, I'm going to do one more thing and then make you very suspicious. Um, this, because it's on the numerator, I can break this apart into 2. Do you agree with that? I could say that that part there, x squared on x squared, is just 1. And then this guy is just a separate guy. Now, you're like, huh, that's unseasonably simple. And you're right, it is, because even though this is a quotient, it's kind of a quotient, but not quotient. Because come back to this guy up here. Right, come back to your first line. And in fact, it's not just the derivative of x squared plus 1 over x, it's also the derivative of x plus 1 over x, right? Oh, I've just evaluated out the fraction. Oh. Yeah, I only have one term on the denominator. So even though it's written as a quotient, you don't have to write it as a quotient. So therefore, you don't have to use the quotient rule. In fact, 
using your powers, you could have just gone straight there, right? So I pulled out this example because just because it looks like a quotient. Don't necessarily treat it like one. Quotient rule is actually something we try to avoid. Um, this V squared business is kind of gross. It makes things algebraically messy. If you can avoid it, do it. Like so. I feel like that would take me the same in the now that you like now that you recognize it and you're actively looking you're actively seeking to avoid the quotient rule wherever you can look for things always simplify first before you differentiate okay in just the same way that if i gave you something like okay 1024 on uh, uh 273 times i don't know 94. You could, of course, go ahead and work out what 1,024 times 90 Calculator. is and 273 times 512. <laughs> but of course, it would be smarter to say, well, that's this why. is a common factor. And then, I, I don't know, that's what, what can I take so out of this? Oh, uh, wait, I meant, I meant that to be 243. Sorry. Oh. So that would become 81. And then that, well, I should have done 9, shouldn't I? Yeah. That would become 27. <laughs> this would become 10. I think I'm done, yeah? 20 over 27. There you go. Okay. So in other words, before you make things worse by multiplying out or by differentiating, right? Simplify first and then differentiate. Does that make sense? 